Uh, basically, in 2009, as you know, Boeing uh, announced that they that the company would be uh, producing their second line of 787 Dreamliners um, there in, in, in North Charleston, uh, in, in South Carolina, which is a right-to-work state. Well, now. Um, the National Labor Relations Board has asked the courts to intervene and force Boeing to stop production in South Carolina. Uh, and then, so the NL NLRB wants Boeing to produce the planes only in Washington State, where its workers must belong to the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace. Uh, uh, what's really striking, though, is that the, they began, as you said, they began the plant in 2009 during the Obama administration, and so the Obama administration let Boeing build this giant factory. I've, been, I've seen it. Yeah. It's right by the airport State in Charleston. Of the art. It's the size of multiple football fields mm -hmm. in terms of, and it's a huge structure. And now they're saying, oh, by the way, having sunk a billion dollars into this plant, you can't start it. Obviously, what the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board did was wait to the last possible moment to, to really stick it to Boeing. And it's the kind of anti-corporate philosophy that I think characterizes much, not all, not the Wall Street bailout part, but the rest of the Obama but, but, but administration. But I think it's a little more complicated than that. First of all, any corporation that operates in America is required to, to, to obey the law, including the laws that allow union uh, members and employees to unionize and to form unions and to, and to operate within the, the, the federal law when it comes to labor unions. Now, I understand the governor has an economic desire to keep as many jobs in South Carolina and steal them from in as many other states, Washington State and others. But, you know, you've got to do it in a legal way. And if the NLRB, which is the one that interprets these laws, says you're not, you're going to have trouble. I don't understand why she doesn't want to just go follow the law like all the other states do. Well, I mean, it's worth bearing in mind, Washington, Boeing did not shut down the Washington plant. They've actually added more oh, jobs. They, they have a great facility. They, most of their right. jobs are in okay, Washington. Okay, so they, they, they've added new jobs in South Carolina, and, and that's what the NLRB right. objects to. But, but why should South Carolina not have to follow the same laws that every of the other 49 states follow? I mean, right. I, I, I understand Governor Haley. She ought to be careful, by the way, this, this race to the bottom, lower wages, less rights for workers because those jobs are going to leave South Carolina and go to Mexico so or I'm China where there aren't any law. You would prefer that, that even though the, uh, South Carolina is a right to work state, right. you're saying, hey, if should Boeing want to uh, allow unions if they choose to or should it just remain the way it is? Well, the way listen, it was there, are, there are, I have no trouble with Boeing having a factory in South Carolina. And, and indeed, there are major American companies, auto companies, defense companies, that have uh, factories across the right to work south in other parts of the country. Uh -huh. but, but there are some labor rights that workers still have. And if the NLRB is deciding that they're violating those rights, they're going to have a big problem. Well, the NLRB is... You, know, it's, it's, you don't like it's, the NLRB. I don't like the NLRB. And, and this, is the, this is the liberal democratic interpretation of what the, what the National Labor Relations Act of 1935 says. And I, I think it's, open, it's going to be clearly open to adjudication and litigation and probably re-legislation re on this. And if you want, a, Fair enough. you want a reminder of why big chunks of the country are afraid of the Obama administration, this, this is the kind of decision. Remember, it's not just the decision itself. It's they waited two years into the – so Boeing built the plant and then said you can't put people, workers in it. That's the outrageous yeah, part. But, but, but you, you said in eight years of the Bush administration, right, there were just as, as assertive and maybe even more so efforts to, to push labor on the opposite direction, to, 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 to make unions weaker, to strengthen the hands of corporations. That, that's what politics is in America, right? One side pushes it one way, the other you're, you're side pushes right, it the so other the, way. The issue is the fairness of, of having Boeing build a plant and then say you can't use it. Well, they should follow the law, would be my advice. But they could have said that two years ago if that's what they thought. Well, they knew the law was there. The here's, the, here's, is. Here's, the, here's the decision. Workers have a right to unionize, uh -huh. right? In right-to-work states, they are, you, you can still form a union, but people who don't want to be in the union don't have to be in the union. In okay. other states, if, if the majority vote of the workplace is taken, then it's a union shop, and if you're going to work there and take advantage of the wages and benefits that the union has negotiated, you have to either be in the union or you have to pay what they call an agency fee, which is essentially the equivalent of dues. And so there's a there's a dispute about exactly how those things are interpreted. I gather, isn't that what the, what the I, I think that's is right. Look, 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 again, this, there, the, there's 75 years of legal history and legislative history on this on this business. Okay. And President Obama wants to demonstrate to right to work America, which is a good chunk of the South and, states, and, and think, the Mountain yeah. West and the, yes. and the, and the Plain States. Uh, if he wants to demonstrate that he's anti-corporate, anti anti-job, he should do exactly I, what he's doing. Listen, there's a context here that we, we, we shouldn't ignore. 
I mean, there is, there is a, a, a political push in this country, led, and we've seen it in Wisconsin and other places, to undermine the power of unions, right, in the public sector and in the private sector, to try and find all kind of technical ways that the, the rights that workers have, have enjoyed for decades in this country, to come together, create a union, and negotiate together with their employer so they have a little power. There's a great move, corporate move in this country, Republican move in this country, to undermine those rights, to weaken those unions. And, you know, this is, a, this is a little bit of a pushback, isn't it? it Ellis is right. That's exactly, that's, that's, this is a little bit of a and pushback. And what's wrong with the unions? There's nothing per se wrong with unions as long as there's an element of non-coercion in it, as long as there's an element of, I don't want to be a part of this union. Well, work, listen, work involves coercion. You know, you join, you take a job at a certain place your whole life. I mean, we coerced every day we go to work, right? That's just part of working. Well, you got to do stuff when you work.